Good morning, and welcome to St. John's Church. We are blessed to be here to worship our Lord Jesus Christ. This coming Saturday at 3, we will have the memorial service uh, for Miss Betty Cuss, uh, Catherine's mother, at 3 o'clock. Is it 3, Catherine, right? Yes. And we'll have it down at the chapel, downstairs. So plan to, please plan to attend 3 o'clock this coming Saturday. Thanks to all who donated for the office carpet, it's great. And just stop by, just to see the carpet, and if you want to see me too. <laughs> it's so beautiful, the freshness of the smell, oh, it is so beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate all of your donation uh, for that. Next Sunday, we'll receive new members um, here, so please plan on attending. On the 23rd of this month, two Sundays from now, we'll have special guests coming in here for the 1030. They're the youth, the young choir of the Malagasy Church in D.C. And they'll perform downstairs, Mary Martha Hall, at 1030. So it's a 30 minutes concert. You don't want to miss it. So please plan on attending. So they'll be here two weeks from now uh, for the 1030 event. Any other announcement? We have council meeting tomorrow night. Um, so all council members are invited to come for that meeting. And of course, we have the insert in the bulletin. So please take this out, uh, take this with you, take it home. It, all, it has all of the events that are happening here in our church, so please make sure you take one with you. Let us continue our service with our gathering hymn, hymn number 864. Please use the red hymnals on the pews. And hymn number 864, praise my soul, the God of heaven. Would you please stand if you're able.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, of mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Would you please turn the person next to you and share the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you as always. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit. We may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading this morning is from 2 Kings, chapter 5. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man in high favor with his master. Because of him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes. He sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure my leprosy. Are not Aaron and far, far, far the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something more difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. He then returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all of earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. We'll now read responsibly Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the right upright in the congregation. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The second reading is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 to 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David, that is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, he will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, and he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, 
rightly explaining the word of truth, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Boys, would you please come up? Hey. Come on, Maimba. There you are. Okay. Let's sit down. You guys going to have a little quiz this morning. I have a few questions for you. Uh-huh. What did you learn at Sunday school this morning? Was there somebody sick? No. Okay. Jesus was okay, somebody's sick and Jesus helped them and healed them. Uh, it is leprosy. Leprosy is skin disease. And you have spots here and here and lots of wounds around your body. And sometimes you lose fingers, you lose your toes, and you lose some arms because of this disease. Back then, they didn't have medicine for it. They didn't have any cure. So if someone had that kind of disease, they sent them out. They didn't live with all people. And how many men were sick? Remember? How many? Ten, Ten right? Okay. And Jesus healed them. Jesus did not even touch them. Jesus say, go ahead. You are healed. Go to the priest. Meaning that go back. And then when, when they heard that, they went to the priest. And on the way to the priest, what happened? It was a miracle. What happened? They yeah, they're not sick anymore. It's gone. But the funny thing is, there was one of the ten. Do you know ten minus one? Nine. Nine. Yeah, you're right. Ten minus one, one is nine, Okay. Nine of them didn't come back to say thank you, Jesus. So how many came back to say thank you to Jesus? One. Just one. Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. But Jesus was glad. He just said, oh, okay. There's one people who came back to me to say thank you. When Jesus heals us, when we are sick, and Jesus brings us back to normal, and we are not sick anymore, and we come back to Jesus to do what? To say Thank you. Let's pray. Yeah. You want to repeat after me? Yeah, hold Jacob's hand. Hold Jacob's hand. Yeah. Okay, hold hands, hold hands, hold hands. Hold hands, guys. Hold his hands. <laughs> Let's pray. You repeat after me, okay? Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. for healing us. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us life. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Would you please stand if you are able? The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he, has, he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, 
get up. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for making us the one Samaritan. Coming back to you and thank you for all of blessings that we have received from you. The healings that we have received from you. Come Holy Spirit and bless your word. Amen. We have two distinguished stories this morning. One is from the book of King, the second King chapter 5, about the commander of the army, one of the enemies of the people of Israel who got sick. The second one is a mix of 10 people who get together, they became friends because they had common problem. Naaman from the Old Testament, he was the enemy of the people of God. But because there was, a, there was a little evangelist who told him to go and find healing, there was a little girl, not even a little boy in their culture, a little girl was not afraid to say that there is God in Israel. She was a little slave and served the, hus the wife of Naaman. And <clears throat> she saw that something is wrong with her master. And then she said, if my master went to the God of Israel, he would be healed. There is a prophet in the land of Israel. How many people have you talked to and you say, if you went and find God, you would be healed? Have you ever given any advice to anybody about God? Because most of the time when we give advice, we think about the best hospital, the best surgeon, the best doctors, the best banking system, the best economy, the best person to talk to, someone who has lots of diploma in their pocket and their wall is filled with nothing but recognition? <coughs> Have you ever tell anybody that ye will be your problem with be solved by going to God? I can see on your face that yes, you did, right? <laughs> This little girl came and talked to the enemy of Israel, those people who did not believe in God, the people who did not believe in Yahweh, and she said, would you please see my God? The king, after receiving the letter from the Naaman, saying, are they picking a fight with me? Am I God to heal him? Leprosy referred to any skin disease. <clears throat> Their medical system was not that advanced like what we have right now. So anyone having skin disease, they are taken out of the society. They do not live in that closed wall. They cannot go in that gate. They get together outside. And there's no cure. They are just waiting for the grace of God. If they got healed by God, they go back. And the process is they have to show themselves first to the priest. The priest played a major role in the society. The priest was not just a preacher. But he played the role as, as of the judge also. Like a doctor also. So they came and the priest observed <coughs> whomever had the, the disease, the leprosy. And then they still have to be quarantined. We know this, this word quarantined. They have to be isolated for a certain period of time, not being able to see the family. <clears throat> and then after that, still revised again by the priest, and the priest said, yes, you got the okay, and there's some kind of ritual that they perform before that person is received as a normal person living in the society. Naaman did not listen to Elisha. Elisha said, okay, 
Elisha didn't even talk to him. He just sent a message, go to Jordan and wait in there for t seven times. <laughs> that would be nice. You go to see a doctor. The doctor doesn't even check on you and just say, like, okay, here's the prescription. Go to CVS Pharmacy. I know, you'd be mad. And this man is a high class and respected man. He expected Elisha to come out and say, like, Shalom, hi, how are you? What can I do for you? Let's pray together. He didn't do that. It is about faith. Do you trust God? So he starts with a message <coughs> from the little girl, and then it is received, and after being received, you have to trust. I like it when you have toothache and on your way to the dentist, you feel okay suddenly, right? That's not faith. That is the fear of the needle and fear of those no noises. This, it requires faith to go to Jordan. And this Jordan is not the river in their land. He said, this is dirty water. Isn't there any better water in Syria? Why do I have to do this? This is humiliating. Sometimes you have to be humiliated in order to be exalted. That's how we follow the rule and the order, the commandment from God. We do without asking question. And he did it seven times. His eyes were big. There is no other God except the God of Israel, except Yahweh, except Jehovah. We can learn from this little girl. We can learn from this little girl. It's just a little word. And here's Naaman. After this, he became a follower of God. The ten lepers, the second story that we see, they were the outsider. Nobody paid attention to them. And when they see people, they stay away. <clears throat> and they are required to say, we are unclean. Don't get closer to us. We are unclean. When they saw Jesus, Jesus' reputation had preceded him. They know who Jesus is from far away. They were not allowed to come with the crowd and talk to Jesus. They heard the story and they said, Jesus, master. See the word master here? They just humiliated themselves immediately. They accept that this is the Lord. Have mercy on us. This is one of the shortest prayers in the Bible. That's it. That's a prayer. Sometimes, and I keep saying this, that we don't want to pray. We are afraid to pray in public. We are ashamed or we are embarrassed. Oh, I cannot do that. And sometimes I don't ask people anymore to pray because I don't want to embarrass them. Because I know the answer I'll get. But if you don't remember even the Lord's Prayer, just use the short one. Someone asked you to pray and stand up and say, like, Jesus, have mercy on me. Amen. That's it. And I tell you, I know some people look like, is that a prayer? Yes, it is. And it's a powerful prayer. Jesus heard it. And Jesus knows what it means. Your prayer doesn't have to be two pages long for Jesus to understand Jesus knows what you want before you even open your mouth. Jesus knows what you need before you even say, I'm going to pray. Have mercy on me. Look the way this great doctor dealt with this disease. He said, what did, what did Jesus say? Get a shot? No. Did he even touch them? <clears throat> Go and show yourselves to whom? <clears throat> to the priest. Go show yourselves to the priest. That's kind of confusing. You ask for healing. They expected normally the procedure should be, okay, get healed. Okay, you look good. Okay, now go to the priest. While you are still sick, go and see the priest. I've heard a lot of excuses on Sunday morning. I cannot go to church because I'm not feeling good. <laughs> I have migraine this morning. I cannot go to church. That's another reason for you to go to church. 
while you are still sick, go see the priest. Not me. Jesus is the high priest. Jesus is the high priest. When you are sick, that is the best reason to go and seek Jesus. Go see the priest while you are still sick. Don't wait until you're healed to go see the priest. Because while you are on your way to Jesus, you'll be healed. Remember the blind guy that Jesus healed? He spat and made some mud and put in his eyes. <laughs> Can you imagine? Who has some cataract here? I, I'm going to spit and put some mud in your eye. <laughs> I know. I see your face like, oh, that's disgusting. Doesn't make sense, right? That's what Jesus did. And put the mud on the guy's eyes. That could make it worse. But that's how God worked. Something that you cannot even think of. And Jesus said, go wash. The man didn't say, oh, where? First of all, I saw a little bit before. But with this mud, I cannot even see where I'm going. And tell me to go to wash. But he went. As soon as he washed his eyes, he can see. The power of faith. The power of trust that we have in Jesus Christ. As they went to see the priest, they got healed. And this Samaritan, remember the connection between the Jews and Samaritan? Jews didn't like Samaritans. They believed that Samaritans are not purebred. They are mixed race. And even like they go from Galilee to Jerusalem and Samaria is here, they turn around add some 10, 30, 40, 50 miles on their journey to avoid Samaria. That's what makes the Good Samaritan's parable powerful because he helped his enemy. Ten of them, one, as soon as he saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus and said, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus said, where are the, the nine? Where are the nine? <clears throat> How many people live in Hagerstown, in Maryland, in the United States, all around the world, and how many people go and say thank you, Jesus, on a Sunday morning and come to his house, make the effort? Everybody received the sun. Everybody received air from God for free. You know, you don't know how much air costs until you have to use oxygen, right? And only few who can come back and will be back and say, thank you, Jesus, for the air. Thank you, Jesus, for the sun. Thank you for another day. Thank you for people living with me. Thank you for this congregation. Faith requires action. To say thank you is not enough. There's action. James say, faith without action is dead faith. I'm glad you are part of the ones. Where are the nines? Where are the nines? Look around. Where are the nines? God is sending you like the little girl in the, the Old Testament to tell people that you are need, you need to come to find some healings. We are all sick spiritually or physically, and God can heal them all. After you receive the blessing from God, Don't be distracted with the blessing. <clears throat> Come back to God first. We ask for a job, and then when we receive the job, we don't have time to say, thank you, God. You ask for the car, instead of coming back and say, thank you, Jesus, for the car, you just spend time driving the cars around until you hit something, and then ask God again. To thank God requires action. Come back and humble yourself prostrate at the feet of Jesus Christ and say, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus will make your faith increased. My friend, this is the time to come back to Jesus, the healer. Ask for healing for yourself, for our community, for our nations, for this world, so that Jesus will heal them and the Christians will be different. They'll come back and say, thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us today. Thank you for another day. Thank you for healing. And we go and see you, the high priest, with faith. We are still sick and we want to be healed by you. And as soon as we are healed, Jesus, help us to come back and to thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Will the congregation please say amen?
Would you please stand and let us sing hymn number 456, 456 found in the red hymnal on our pews, baptized in water. Let us profess our faith as we are going to use the words of the Apostle Creed found in the bulletin on page number 7. I believe in God, God Almighty. Please be seated. <clears throat> Are there any joys or concerns to share this morning? Um, I'd like to welcome all of the visitors being here with us. And I'm going to single out a few friends of the family, Eme and Nono. Thank you for visiting with us this morning, all the way from Silver Spring. Thank you for coming. And we have a visitor from Minneapolis being with us this morning, too, Miss Mary, uh, sitting back there with uh, Jan's sister, Linda. Thank you for worshiping the Lord with us this morning. And. And I have Pastor Tuki in the back. Would you please stand too? You're so far in the back. So uh, that's my brother, Tuki from Madagascar. And he'll be with us for a few months. Um, he came last week. Welcome. Any other visitors here this morning? 
thank you all for being here. Any other joys and concerns? We have some um, few uh, prayer requests here this morning. Please keep Bob uh, Crawford in your prayer uh, for healing. And also we pray for Floyd is having surgery this coming Tuesday. We'll, we'll pray for you. Pray for you. Yes, sir. Any other? Yes, please. Okay, what's his, what's, Wes. Wes, okay, three years old, huh, okay, we'll keep Wes in our prayer, thank you, any other, yes please, prayers for Meredith's dad, Tom, he's back in the hospital, he's got some things, oh, okay, is he at Meredith's, okay, we'll pray for uh, Tom, Tom is in the hospital for double pneumonia, we'll pray for him, thank you, Mark. Um, any anniversary or birthdays to celebrate? I heard from the, uh, the early service, Sandy, Sandy and Greg, uh, they're celebrating the 36th or 37th anniversary of um, their marriage. Yes, please. On October 5th, huh? my husband and I, we celebrated our Wedding anniversary. Wow, congratulations. So, Nono and Eme <coughs> celebrating 30, 35th, right? 31st. Oh, 31st. Yes. Congratulations. Yes, Jan. Oh, what's her name? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah's birthday. Michelle oh, she lives in Texas. I would like to celebrate my birthday in Texas too. Kind of wild. <laughs> Happy birthday to her. Any others? Yes, please. My niece's husband, Forrest, turned 30 yesterday. Oh, okay, Forrest. Okay. Happy, belated, ha happy birthday. Yeah, to Forrest. Yes, sir. How is he doing these days? Hmm. Pray for Danny. Yeah, thank you. Okay. If not, we'll continue with the uh, prayers of the church. And also praise God for healing for. David and Jan, uh, God is good. It's so good to see the both of you here. Uh, praise God for that. God is good all the time. In gratitude and humility, my friends, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. This morning, I invite you to reply with your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons, inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by pollution and deforestations. Hear us, O oh God. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful God, we give you thanks 
that you hear the cries of those in need. We remember today all of those who are sick, and we mention names. We pray for Tom so that you will strengthen him and give him all the power that he needs and to fight the pneumonia. Pray for all the doctors and every medical team that works around him. We pray for Bob Crawford. We pray for upcoming surgery for Floyd. We pray that you strengthen him, you be with everyone surrounding him on that day. We all always remember also then in our prayer. Be with the family, O oh Lord, and we pray for the upcoming transplant that will be uh, done to him. Uh, you are the life of those who struggle. Remember the three-year-old Wes in our prayer. God, you are the God of hope. You are the God of life. And we remember all of those who are suffering from any kind of disease in this congregation, either it's spiritual or it's a physical disease. We pray, O oh God, restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, those who feel rejected, and those who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. God, you are the giver of life. We give thanks and praise to you for those celebrating birthdays. We give thanks to you for those who are celebrating their love by the gift of anniversaries. Remember today, Sandy and Greg. We remember today, Nono and Aimé. And we remember today all of the married couple in this congregation so that ye will clothe each of them with your love. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O God. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll continue with the, of the offering.
Would you please stand if you are able? Let us pray together. Holy God, gracious and merciful, Amen. Our Father. Please receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please use the red hymnal for our sending song. It is hymn number 848, 848, Give to Our God Immortal Praise. Dear friends, go in peace and serve the Lord.